stages of my marketing plan. Got my capability statement and I'm ready to go. Got my balance sheet, my PL, my statement of cash flow. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a businessman, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a businessman. Get up. Good afternoon. This is Crystal Mitchell and Gilbert Buchanan, who's my co-host, and he's not here today. He's out razzling and dazzling people at the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, which uh, convention that's in Riverside, California. We are so excited that you're here and that you're listening in to our second show, and we're excited to be here for our second show. And we have some wonderful wonderful young people in the house today. We have some wonderful people that I work with that are my co my uh, colleagues that I uh, do a program called uh, Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship to, the, to uh, Entrepreneurs to Youth. And so that's what the show is today about. Our youth entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs doing big things out there in this world. And so, and these kids that came out Today, they were in, pro, in a biz camp with us last summer, and so we're going to have a great time with them. They're, they're, they're really innovative young people, and we were so impressed with their dedication to their, to their businesses that they developed. So before we get on, move forward, I'm going to talk a little bit about who I am. So I am Crystal Mitchell. I am a third-generation entrepreneur. My whole entire family are entrepreneurs, and so it's therefore is in my DNA. I'm one of those three, the three percent of the population that um, were born to be an entrepreneur. And I've been in business for 20 years, and, and I specialize in accounting, bookkeeping, business coaching, and consulting, and training solutions for small businesses and nonprofit organizations and agencies. And as a business coach. One of the things that I've done was to um, help my my clients develop tools and and resources that can help them become uh, more successful in every stage of their business. And so we've offered we we've, we've done extensive business uh, development training workshops and seminars and and marketing strategies and uh, financial management services that. I feel that has come, that's really has helped a lot of our businesses, and we're really, really proud of a lot of them. And Gilbert, my co-partner, my co-host here, he has been in the business for 20 years as well, and his area of expertise is, is uh, procurement and helping businesses prepare themselves at, so that they can participate in the di uh, supplier diversity uh, arena of business. And so... And as I said, Gilbert's out of town. He's out in Riverside doing his thing out there, and he's going to come back next week with so much information that he's gotten from the chambers in Riverside, and uh, we will be excited about what he's bringing to the table. In addition to being a business uh, coach and an entrepreneur, I am also the co-director of Recycling Black Dollars, and that's an organization that encourages small business owners and consumers to support other black businesses and to ensure that we recycle our dollars in our community. And the last two weeks has been pretty intense for our community. And I've gone to a number of workshops and, and um, the other day I actually participated in, I wasn't in the march, but I was at the rally for Black uh, Lives Matter. And they didn't. They anticipated 300 people, and they got 3,000 people. And but everybody was needing something. They needed a direction. They needed a uh, plan. Um, they were angry. They had a lot of uh, of misplaced energy, and they just felt like that they had had enough, and it was time for something to be done. So with that, uh, I kind of talked to a number of people and, and let them know that Recycling Black Dollars has been in the community for 28 years, and we've gone through a number of unrest. We uh, came, uh, we were founded by Mohammed Nazardine in 1988, and that was, I believe, right around the Watts riots, somewhere around in that area. I think that was what was going on. And then after that, um, we had the Rodney King episodes, and so this is this this 
the stuff that we're going through, the things that we're going through now is not, this is not the first time. And we've been here many, many times. And I think though we, we hopefully we're at a place where we can make some major changes that will be, uh, that will work and help all our communities. Because the black and brown are really highly affected by this. But some of that is that, um, is that economic power. We don't have economic power, and that's the purpose of entrepreneurship, is being able to create businesses that can uh, then employ the individuals that live in their communities. And then when we have that empowerment, we can be able to make sure that our schools are safe and they're teaching our children what they need to be taught and that our, our police are part of the community. And, and that we're not enemies with one another, and then we're making the, our communities a place where everyone can flourish and become successful. And so that's where we are right now, and I think we're at a, it's, it's bubbled over and flowed over, flowed over like a volcano. And so we have to make some very definitive decisions and on creating business, creating a flow of monies through the community so there's not so much hopelessness in our communities. And so that was one of the events I went to. I also went to another event that was called Black, Live, Black Money Matters. And that rally was uh, interesting. And uh, I actually spoke at that event and I talked about some of the things that had gone on in the community um, they were looking for resources as to where the black businesses were and how could they support them. They, uh, I think there was a, a, a campaign that came out that we should move our monies over to black banks. And so in Los Angeles, there happens to be two black banks. One is our community-based banks, and one is One United uh, Bank, and then the other one is Broadway Federal. One United has been in the community for 46 years, and Broadway Federal has been in the community for 76 years. Mm -hmm. And both of those banks are there, but even with the, the campaign to move $100 into their bank account, it really is a little bit more than that. It's about um, creating relationships with your bank. And even if you're at a bank that is not within your community, making sure that bank is part of the community, that they're providing resources to our community, to our organizations that can help us help them. So we, we live, we're, we're interdependent of each other, and that's what we need to be. We don't need to be dependent on anybody, but we all need to work together as a whole, and then that way no one feels that they're being isolated, and which is why Black Lives Matter, because right now they happen to be the one that's isolated and feeling at a loss with all the things that's going on in the community. And so we have to overcome this because there are parents that are absolutely frightened for their children to leave the house without them. Um, I have nephews and I'm very, very concerned when they're outside of the, our site. And so everybody's just on edge. And it's not just young black men, it's young black women, it's uh, old black women, it's everybody. It's, so it's just come to a place that we really have to make some changes. And so as an entrepreneur, I understand the flow of money and I understand that if you have, and, and the African American community, they're very innovative. Our, our, after slavery, that's what we did. We created our businesses and we had no choice but to support our own. So there's some things that we have to do to change our mindset that we are supporting our businesses. And it's, and when I was at the Black Money Matters, it was, at first I wasn't going to go, and then I was looking, and I was listening to all the activity online, and, and they had a lot of dialogue going on, and they were like, we need to, we need, we need a resource guide. We need classes. We need, and, and all the things that all of us in the community for the last 20 years have been doing. It's like, okay, wait a minute. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We're out here doing it already. And you guys need to, we need to come together. Those of us that have been in the trenches and have been out here, the foot soldiers doing this, we now need that new group who has, they, they're woke now, and to come together and be committed to carry this out. Because RBD has been in existence for 28 years. 
we really should be in a different position right now. We shouldn't be still talking about supporting our black businesses. We shouldn't be talking about that um, the police don't respect us because money breeds the respect. If you have money and you have your ownership, you own property in the community, you, uh, you employ the community, now you have a voice. You have something to say. And so we have some work to do. We have a lot of work to do. And so it's going to take the whole entire community, black, brown, green, purple, white, every color in the rainbow. If we're living in the communities together, we need to be working together. And, and helping, because it comes down to our children. That's really what it is. It's the legacy of our kids. If where we stand today is not much hope for our children that are coming up and they're bright and they're intelligent and they have so much more than we had when we were kids and so many more resources than we had. And these kids, I think, are really actually brilliant. They, we didn't have all the, the smarts that they have. They come that way. That way. Uh, they can use they, uh, technology as part of their world. It's something that we've had to embrace, but it's, they don't know anything else. They don't know about anything that we used to do that required manual work. Right. <laughs> like <laughs> so. turning the television. <laughs> right. So I'm going to introduce my two guests that are here today um, so they can engage in this conversation I'm having because both of them have been out here, and, and the, uh, one of them has, uh, she's been in the trenches for a long time, and, and, and when I read your, her bio, you'll understand why she has a lot of input in this area. Uh, but my guests today are Rhonda Santerford. She is the executive director for Celebrate Life, and she's also a nifty instructor with myself, and we're going to be talking about a program and a, and a biz camp that we're going to be running in about, ten to, in about a week, actually. A one whole week. And then my other guest is uh, Bracey uh, Fu Fuentes. 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 Mm -hmm. And she is the Los Angeles Lead Program uh, Associate. I think she's bra she's kind of new to the Nifty program. Yeah, yeah. I joined the team in May. Okay. I've been volunteering for a while, so. Yeah, so she knows about the programs. <laughs> and so exactly. we're, I'm going to read both of their, let me read their bios and then um, uh, before we go to break. And then we, we'll get into the meat of what we're doing here today. So Pastor Rhonda H H Holbert Santerford, founder and CEO of Celebrate Life Cancer Ministry. Rhonda retired from the Los Angeles Urban League last year after 25 years of very dedicated service. She served in leadership in both the employment and business, business development departments. She holds in-depth knowledge of employment and business development operations at various levels. She has a strong strategic planning and management skills with extensive experience in program operations. She has served the community of Los Angeles through the Los Angeles Urban League by assisting them to become self-sustainable families and individuals through facilitating financial literacy, business development, and operating of VITA, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Service. Uh, Ms. Uh, Pastor Rhonda San Herbert Holbert Santaford, she is, um, also the executive director of Celebrate Life, and that's her new career. That's her second act, and that's her passion, and that's her purpose. And so she left us in the entrepreneurial world. It was a great loss for us, but a great gain for the healthcare world. And uh, she serves as a community co-leader with the Southern Los Angeles Patients Navigation and Wellness Center. She began Celebrate Life Cancer Ministry in December 2002 as a result of surviving inflammation, inflammatory breast cancer. And, it is an, and, and Celebrate Life is a nonprofit organization that promotes and sustains the quality of life after cancer diagnosis through spiritual encouragement, education, and financial so so resources to the cancer fighter, survivor, and their families. Over the past few years, she has been a community partner examining the needs of cancer patients uh, in the South Los Angeles community for cancer prevention, care, and support in collaboration with the Southern Los Angeles Patients Navigation and Wellness Center. She's currently working with Charles Drew University Division of Cancer Research and Training, providing cancer research and clinical 
tri uh, trial education. Now, I met Rhonda about two years ago, and I was introduced to her by another colleague of mine. And we immediately hit it off, and I did a class for them over at the Urban League. Uh, I think I substituted for someone. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, where I was doing all my training, the the that particular organization closed down, and I was without a training uh, facility. And I met her. I was at one of the Black Business Expos, and I saw her, and I said, hey, I need a place to train. She goes, hey, take out your calendar and put down a date and let's go. And after that, we were on. And for two years up until the day of her retirement, we have done some amazing things amazing. in the community. Yeah. Amazing. We, we made some uh, incredible inroads. We created a mastermind program. Um, we, were, we had workshops running like almost every month. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I really... She is just a, a force to reckon with when it comes to putting on programs. She has everything running in such order. And even if you don't know what you're doing, you do know what you're doing because she got it all in place. And so welcome, Miss Rhonda. Well, thank you, Kristen. I'm it's glad that here. you're here. <laughs> <laughs> and then my next guest, I just met her last week, two weeks ago. We Yeah, met. about two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. about two weeks ago. And... Um, we were having conversation, and, and it was like we've known each other all our <laughs> lives. And it's like, wow, okay. So we know that our camp is going to be fantastic this it's, year because we be, connected just, like, immediately. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. So let me, um, let me find your, and all my little notes here, let me find your bio. Uh, where are we? So, Miss Rhonda, while I'm finding her bio, so tell us a little bit about you that I didn't tell already. <laughs> oh, man, there's something about me already. I know. Um, well, I'm just really excited about BizCamp getting started. Um, you know, when I left the league, I really wasn't sure if I was going to do this or not. But with the encouragement of Crystal and the great Nifty team, that we have to do this because it's not even about us. Mm -hmm. It's about pouring this information and building the entrepreneur skills in the young people in L.A. County, even though Nifty does it internationally. Yes. Um, we're very interested in the success of our children here in our community. Yes, we are. Um, so how long have you been doing the program? I've been a Nifty, certified Nifty instructor since 2007. Nice. So, um, and at that time, it was... I just actually had a concern for the children because the city of L.A. was decreasing the, um, the employment opportunities for the summer. Summer school conversations were beginning to not have so many classes. Mm -hmm. And I don't have children, but that just disturbed me. Okay. And so I talked to... Um, my director at the Urban League at the time, which was Dr. Renee Smith Maddox. And um, I said, we have to do something about these, you know, summer stuff because we'll have too many young people in the street or too many sitting at home not learning anything when they have so much talent and that just needs to be cracked open and revealed. Yes. And she introduced me to Estelle and Betsy way back then, and we have been on a roll ever since. Okay. Okay. I know I actually, she, she reached out cause she, one of the things you do in Nifty when you're running a, a camp, you reach out to everybody, you know, to come and volunteer. <laughs> right. Yes, you do. <laughs> it takes it the takes whole community. Village. Yeah, it's a whole village. It's a whole community. So, so we're very good. We're, we do ex excellent at grabbing all of the, the village and bringing them <laughs> together. And so that was how, that was my exposure. Mm -hmm. You, you invited me to uh, be one of the, the volunteer coaches. Okay. And um, I think that was, Three years ago. No, it's farther back. Than farther back, four mm -hmm. years? Yeah, about four. <laughs> and I had such a great time. Uh, one of my passions, in addition to everything else that I do, which is a lot of stuff, is, is children. Mm -hmm. And I'm very passionate about being an entrepreneur. And so to see kids that are out there building their own businesses and, be, and with the hope that, I mean, some of them actually have done such an incredible job. The young lady that just did the lemonade stand, mm -hmm. and she just sold it for $11 million billion to the Whole Food Company. Wow. wow. And she's, I think, 11? 11, 
12. Yeah, they impressed me. Yeah. 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 They're young. And so when you when you look at that, young kids out there making more money than their adult, their parents have ever even thought about mm-hmm. and possibly never would ever get to a place. I mean, $11 million for a business at 11, someone to purchase that, that's, that's wow. That's Facebook kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and so when I met the kids and I'm like, wow, these are pretty cool little kids over here and 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 they're having exchanges like I have with my clients and when I'm teaching adult entrepreneurship and I'm thinking wow so then a couple of years later you I be, I start teaching and so when they told me that the kids were going to have a business plan in 10 days I'm like no they're not <laughs> you'll be surprised right. hey, these kids you know, are, adults that don't have one uh, yeah. right. 10 years in fact I still have some adults that have participated in classes like five, six years ago, and they still don't have the business plan. So when they told me that, like, no, they are not going to have a business plan in 10 days. Mm-hmm. And not only do that ha- did they have it in 10 days, they had it in seven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because really the last three days are they preparing for the competition. And they probably had a product to present it with. <laughs> and they had a product. And yeah. so, of course, I had a class going on the very first uh, time I taught and uh, a business plan class. And so when I went back, oh, was I, I was so hard on the adults. And they kept saying, but we're adults. We have a lot of other stuff. They're kids. <laughs> Why? You guys need to hurry up. What's right, wrong with you? Right. So they were like, oh, my God, you're, you're mean. <laughs> <laughs> you're really mean. So, um, but that was my experience, my first, and I've loved it. And so I'm really looking forward to it as well. Yes. So, um, Tracy, I don't have your bio, so you're going to have to tell yeah. me, tell us who you are. <laughs> <laughs> sure, of course. I, I guess I'm the only one that knows really who I am, right? <laughs> you're the only one that knows. Um, so my name is Bracey Fuentes. I'm currently the lead program associate at uh, Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship, which is what we call in NIFTY for, for throughout this whole conversation. Um, I, I grew up in East Los Angeles, um, and definitely uh, I can relate to the under-resourced communities, uh, you know, um, just everything that the whole media talks about in those types of communities, it's, I, I lived them. So I could definitely connect to, to those. Um, I helped open up two elementary schools out in East Los Angeles. Uh, did a lot of the operation side, did a lot of the um, support and just making sure that we get students in and provide them an opportunity for high quality education. And then after that, I just recently got my master's degree from the University of Southern California uh, in social entrepreneurship. So um, after graduating, or in the meantime graduating, I, I found Nifty, and, and sort of Nifty found me online sort of thing, and we basically started volunteering. I realized that I can use my educational background um, as well as my just working in schools and sort of mix that with business and so this is a perfect fit for me to join the team and really like make this like really excel and provide these opportunities even to more students um, and young entrepreneurs in our community in Los Angeles. Okay it's so rewarding to work with kids. It's amazing I don't I can't imagine my life not working with kids I think they they just bring like so much energy out of me that that I, I I really I have more patience working with young adults than and then I do with adults. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you were mentioning, you know, they have higher expectations for adults when the students, you know, get it. <laughs> right, and the kids are just so um, they're they're I don't know, it's just that their energy. Yeah, and and, and they're like they're little, fearless. Yeah, too. <laughs> and they're like little sponges, mm-hmm. and no matter what you're teaching them. And um, one of the things Rhonda and I did last year, we worked. Um, we did a program at Dorsey, the mm-hmm. same program at Dorsey, and these were older kids and and kids that had never even ever thought about being entrepreneurs. Exactly. And and it was so it was such an award, rewarding experience because it was a little harder than yes. what we do mm-hmm. because our kids are uh, that are in a biz camp, you know, they are different families, different different. Um, encouragements and, and support from their community where a lot of the children that we did this program with at Dorsey, they didn't have that. Mm-hmm. And um, so Rhonda and I go in and 
we we're just we're just right off the back of the nifty camp so we are all excited and <laughs> we're going to go in and talk to 30 kids that are just like the 25 we just th- that was not the case we had to regroup day one <laughs> <laughs> Ron is like oh my god maybe we can't do this <laughs> so and when I'm asking the kids what they want to do for uh, their businesses and they're looking at me like I'm from planet I don't know Mars <laughs> and they're going business and I was like, okay, all right, well, we won't worry about business. What, what do you want to do after high, you get out of school? And they're like, what? <laughs> and I, okay, what do you like to do? What is your passion? They're like, and one of the kids said, nobody's ever asked me that. Wow. And these, they were sophomores in high school. Right. So it was just amazing that they had no clue. They weren't accustomed to it. You know, this was like total foreign land. For us and for them. Yeah, and the, the the crazy thing I think is that there's there's the young spirits has so much imagination, and within those imaginations are solutions that we need to tap into and help them bring them, you know, really help a them, product, yeah. a service, or something right. to our community. So yeah. So. And and these kids it was like they the creativity had been sucked out somewhere mm-hmm. along the way, and so yeah. we actually had to spend our time. Um, getting them to dream, dream. We had to first start that way and and getting them to see that there are dreams out there and whatever they want to do, they can do that. And uh, But it was challenging. It was challenging in the beginning. But at the end, one of the things that every child that was in, left in the class, they actually got up and did their three-minute pitch or three-second pitch. And they were so excited. They actually had business concepts. We never got to actually the... the creating a plan Mm -hmm. but they did have concepts and and they were able to take the things that they wanted to do uh there was two that stuck out pretty um stuck out to me was this one young man he um wanted to he told me he wanted to build things Mm -hmm. so i asked him what do you want to build i said do you he says i don't know houses and buildings and stuff i said so do you want to be the architect or do you want to be the uh, contractor and he's like I don't know what an architect is, and he. what do they do? So I told him that they drew up the plans. He's like, that might be nice. So um, I brought in a tabletop book that I have from Paul Williams, which is a, uh, is a black architect, and oh, wow, I think he came out in the 19, 1901 or something of that <laughs> nature. In fact, he was one of the founding um uh, fathers of Broadway Federal Bank, mm. and so when I, and I brought the book to the class and I let him look through it, and 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 Paul Williams had built First Amy Church and a number, I mean the airport. There's there's some things that he did at the but all over the the city and all over the world he actually had done. And so when he saw that he could build a church, he goes, I can build a church and be a preacher. Oh, and I said, yeah, you can. And so he was really, really excited. And and then there was two twin boys. They were brothers that were the soccer players. And so um, once we realized that they could play soccer professionally, but afterwards, then they could have their own equipment company. They could have their own T-shirt company. They could have their shoe line and, and be physical therapists. Oh, they were really excited after mm-hmm. that. And so that was probably the most rewarding thing Mm -hmm. that we helped them dream. And I think that's what this program, what Nifty and any entrepreneurial program is, helping kids dream. Yeah. And dream big. Yes, yes. And that's what we do. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Again, this is... The, um, the Business Zone uh, with Gilbert and Crystal, and we're going to go to break, and we'd love to have you call in after we get into our conversation. The number is 323-293-3375. So we're going to take a break at the moment, and we'll be back shortly. Hello, we're back from our break, and we want to thank you all for supporting the Business Zone, our new radio show designed to help small businesses become business-ready, contract-ready, and bank loan-ready. With your listenership, we have reached almost 10,000 viewers on Facebook and listeners 
in in actually three days, and it was our very first show. So Congratulations. we are so excited about that. <laughs> so just imagine after we've been here for a month. Wow. So <laughs> we are we uh, broadcast live live stream every Friday afternoon from three to five. And you can um, find us on morrismedialive.com. And um, we are going to be talking about all aspects of business, getting our business, our small businesses, contract ready, bank loan ready, and business ready. Uh, one of the things as a, a business coach that I have found that our, our entrepreneurs tend to fall into business. They, the infrastructure is never put in place. And, and it, it goes along fine until there's a crisis like a economy crash. And then they realize that, oh, wow, we, we don't know where to go from here or we don't know how to move up or here or how to scale up. And one of the things that Rhonda d did, as well as the Nifty program, she ran the entrepreneurial program at the Los Angeles Urban League. And so that was the capacity that she and I worked in. And we've had many... Uh, coaching section, sessions with number of businesses. And would you say that was the, the, the infrastructure is yes. the biggest issue? You're getting it started, you know, laying the, a solid foundation because so many of them want to run the business, mm -hmm. but they don't have a foundation. They want to make the product. They mm -hmm. want to provide the service. But the operations of the organization is what needs to be tightened up in a great kind of way. Yeah, in a great kind of way. <laughs> and, and, and we really found that to be the case when they started the train project, Jack, the Metro train project on Crenshaw, on the Crenshaw Corridor. Mm -hmm. So many of the businesses that uh, were already hanging on by a thread, uh, by the time they got to the train and they start uh, construction in front of their businesses, uh, that thread was broke. Yes, it And was. so she also worked with, they had a program, uh, the Urban League has a program over there called the Business Solutions Center. Mm -hmm. And so she worked with a number of the businesses up and down the corridor, um, helping them reach and have access to the tools mm -hmm. and the resources that we could bring to them. Want to talk actually, on that? Actually, um, we're trying to get them to think differently uh, because they're so dependent upon Who's going to walk in the door? But they have not spent marketing dollars. Yes. They have not tapped in. They, I was amazed at how many did not have email. Mm -hmm. So they don't have social media. They don't have other ways. They're not running specials to get customers in their door. They haven't started uh, thinking about creative ways of what. how can I deliver the product to them. Mm -hmm. If they can't get to me, can I get to them? Can I increase my delivery? You know, what is it that we can do to stay in business? I don't have to be dependent upon the fact that uh, Metro just closed the street so people can't even get to my facility mm -hmm. um, and whether or not I'm able to feed my family. So it's not just being in business and, and making a profit, but can I feed my family? Right, exactly. And so many of them cannot feed their family or they're barely feeding their family. And, and it's almost as if the, the revenue that they're generating is really like a paycheck mm -hmm. because it's not creating any profit that's going back into the business. It's going to the bare necessities of the business and then the bare necessities at their home. Mm -hmm. And so um, we spent endless hours helping them see and change the mindset. And that's what has to happen with a lot of minority-owned businesses. We have to think bigger and broader. And that's what's so amazing about the Nifty program because the kids come in with these grand ideas and wonderful ideas. And we're like, yeah, go for it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we don't care. Yeah, you want to fill a spaceship to the moon? <laughs> okay, we will help you build a spaceship. But our, our adult uh, business owners need that same enthusiasm that the kids have that... Uh, Wow, when I think of a business, I don't think of a small business. I think of a business, mm -hmm. a business that has legs and arms and that can grow into multi-million dollars. And um, so that's, um, that's a challenge on the adult side. Mm -hmm. But on the kid's side, that's a total different <laughs> thing. But we have such a great time. So, um, Rhonda, tell me, what was the overall experience for you when you first started working with Nifty? Wow. Um, overall, when I first started, I didn't have structure. Um, I had support, but I could do it any way I wanted. So when we first started, we started with a four-week program. Okay. And um, and we recruited 
young people, and it was a matter of who's over will, let them come. So if you're not in summer school and you're available and you can be here every day because, you know, I, I put some requirements on it. They had to be a uh, business professional. They had to not require babysitting. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to have the drive and be willing to do the work. You know, just just be excited about doing something. It couldn't be a bump on a log and just sit in the class. No, that wasn't going to work. So, um, so in four weeks, we were able to, um, and they didn't have to have an idea before they arrived. We would help build it, help find, figure out in day one. Mm-hmm. We'd help them identify something that they might be interested in and mm-hmm. then build from there. Yeah. And uh, so we, we ended up having uh, field trips. We, we go to the Junior Achievement Finance Park every year. Um, and that within itself is just uh, a, a blessing to be able to add personal budgeting to the business uh, budgeting and um, expense reports and all that kind of stuff to their plan. Um, and then we always visit a company. Uh, we, um, we, we take a walking tour. Yes. So, and in the walking tour, basically, they're looking to see whatever my business is, what's in this neighborhood, what's not in this neighborhood, and then would my business fit in this neighborhood. And we usually will walk to a neighborhood uh, restaurant and have lunch. And the last couple of years, we've been having lunch with Greg Doolin. Yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then Greg would take some time. The, you know, the, the owner of the restaurant would then take time and talk to them about how they got in business and some ups and downs of challenges that, that they have and that they've experienced in it. So it's just marvelous. Right. And I, and I was at Greg Doolin's, Doolin's Restaurant, which is on Crenshaw, and I believe... 43rd, somewhere around in that area. It's a soul food restaurant that has been in the community for well over 30 years. 48th. 48th, 48th. And his father um, opened up uh, Doolin's. um, It actually, I think it started with Aunt Kizzy's back back Mm -hmm. porch, which was in the marina. And then... um, then they have three locations now. They have uh, Adolph's that's on Manchester. Mm-hmm. And then they have uh, um, Greg's Place, Doolin's Restaurant and Catering Services, that's on 48th. And then they have one on Manchester and, no, yeah, Manchester oh, yeah. Uh, by Crenshaw. Yes. That's yes. Their, one of their locations. And I hear he's um, maybe one of the newer restaurants that's going to be in the Lamert Park Village. Okay, yeah, awesome. Yeah, he's working on some stuff there, too. So I just saw him last week, and it, he's pretty excited. But he really, when he talk, when we talk about the Nifty program, he's like, oh, are the kids coming back? Are the kids coming back? Because <laughs> he loves having the kids there. And then for those that have never been to Doolin's or never, ever experienced soul food, I remember Estelle uh, Reyes. <laughs> she's like, oh, my God, this is good food. <laughs> And, 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 the, and, the, and the classes are made up of children from all ethnicities. So all right. a, a lot of them had not had soul food. <laughs> and so they all really, truly enjoyed themselves. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's a, that's a fun thing. So, Bracey, can you tell us a little about, about the other programs and, and, and how the programs are structured for the kids? Right, yes. Yeah. So, so Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship has several programs um, during the school year. We have Exploring Careers, where we pay, basically take the students' uh, ideas, have them do a little research, and then sort of maybe even become like an MVP type of the um, or your most viable product. We On the Exploring Career, we hold off on the financial piece so it's more of an introductory to the nifty program and then from there we do uh, owning your own future which is the the bread and butter butter of um, nifty and we walk them from ideation to creation to um, financials to marketing so it's it touches on all the entire business plan concepts and to the point where we then um, encourage and po- uh, yeah, um, encourage them to start launching their businesses. So uh, we encourage them to do an, their MVPs, multiple prototypes. They can pivot from there. So there are definitely a lot of opportunities to just with the entire um, curriculum. Um, and then we have a startup tech. So it's mostly how do we create uh, an app? 
it would be an example. So how do we go into and penetrate into the the technology world uh, when you want have an idea with technology? So those are the three um, main components of Nifty. We also have our summer program. So VizCamp is funded by a city foundation. So VizCamp, we've been talking about it um, over this com conversation and then the one that we're currently ru uh, operating in conjunction is the startup summer so startup summer uh, we're partnered with usc um, right now so we're hosting the program there and it's basically a program where if a student has already taken the nifty curriculum uh, we choose 20 of the top applicants to invite them over for the summer um, put um, put them through the boot camp um, summer program and then the whole the whole approach to this program is for them to launch their idea at the end of the program so we also provide mentors to come in so we have a lot of partnership with mentors to um, sort of guide them um, in their in their industries and so yeah okay. it's, it's, we have both. how many children do you do actually come come through the program throughout the year yes so this year we've um, we hit around eight, over 1800 students uh, young entrepreneurs um, with at 23 diff 24 different schools um, and uh, working with over 30 teachers. Um, this coming school year, we're um, forecasting to work with 2,300 students. Um, yeah, and so then uh, once the students take complete the Nifty program, they become alumni. So then we provide them uh, through our partnerships some alumni opportunities like scholarships for for them to pursue their their ideas after after they've sort of um, exited the, the program. And what is the overall age for the schools? Because I know what our overall age is, but what is the overall age for those that are in the school system with, with grade the eight? Yeah, the overall age is in mostly high school, between 15 and 18 years old. Um, we do are we are inside middle schools as well. So um, we have teachers who are like, who live and breathe nifty and they really um, break it down at the middle school level they don't dumb it down they just break it down so that they can understand certain concepts and so the students get to you know um, pitch their ideas a lot of the nifty owning your future then sort of puts you into um, classroom competitions and so from there they get pushed on to semi-regional competitions in Los Angeles across all schools um, and then from those top uh, finalists um, they get invited to the regional and then from those um, winners they go to the nationals all the way to New York so this year we are our national uh, finalists are going to be competing for twenty five thousand dollars so wow. they can invest in their in their own um, company in their ventures now are there many students that have after they finished high school that they actually are running their own businesses or yes. went to college and running their businesses while they're in college? Yes, we do have some students who are, you know, profiting <laughs> as they go to college. And so it's, I think at that point they start trying to figure out okay, how to do college and do time uh, time management. I think that's where we, they start struggling with the time. Mm -hmm. Like how do I implement my business, get this running and keep it running and then um, also focus on, on school, so. And this program is nationwide? This program is nation and globally wide, yes. Okay. What, so other, what countries are you in? Yikes, um, I want to say uh, we're in oh, China. Uh, China. China. Yeah, we're in China. <laughs> China. China. I know uh, we're Australia. Yes. Yeah, Australia. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, they're, so they're <laughs> so they're global partners. Global yeah. Partners. yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So Rhonda, can you tell them because this is. Um, for the parents and, and the kids that have come through the program, what our requirements are for BizCamp for oh, the kids? For this year, BizCamp um, is, uh, was it 13? I think it's 13 to 18. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, they there's an application, um, and actually orientation is tomorrow. I'm sorry, I'm jumping into that right away because um, we, there are still just a couple of spots still available, mm -hmm. um, but orientation is tomorrow. Um, they and again, they just need to have a drive to want to do something, um, whether they enjoy the, the, the ideal young person will be the one that's trying to sell candy at school. Mm -hmm. The one who wants to make a pet rock. OK. Mm -hmm. um, the one who wants an app or 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 say they um, they're always trying to figure out how to get the things that parents can't afford to give them. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the ideal young person because they have drive. Right. You know, because exactly. sometimes you're having a hard time. What does drive look like? Mm -hmm. um, but that's that's the ideal young person. So um, 
uh, I know in years past, it won't happen this year, but uh, a couple of years ago, we actually had a seven-year-old. Wow. In the class. It was the, the, the age was from 7 to 18. Wow. And the reason that the 7-year-old got in the class was because we were on a field trip and they were talking about their hot dog business that they were running with their cousin in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Wow. And they just happened to be in L.A. for the summer. And I said, well, who's teaching you? Oh, we just do this, this, and this. And he had the concept. So I said, well, if we could stay with that. I would Uh let him in. But this year, we don't have space for a (laughs) (laughs) seven-year-old. So, Uh, so, Because the curriculum, what's good about the curriculum is while there is a book, the goal is that the instructors bring the book alive. Exactly. So that's why various ages can be in the room and still everyone be successful. Because even that the youngest person in the room still has to do their presentation. They still have to do public speaking every day. Mm -hmm. They have to come business casual. You know, they have to pay attention. We have guest speakers. Other entrepreneurs come in and share. We have um, business business plan coaches come in and sit one on one with the young Mm -hmm. people. And we still need more coaches. So, yes. Okay. So <laughs> you guys hear that out there. And we always need right. coaches. We need coaches. We need volunteers. Uh, the program starts July twenty fifth. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it goes on to August fifth. And the kids start um, with at we're there at eight o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. Class starts at nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. They are fed breakfast, lunch, and, and snacks. snacks. Mm-hmm. Um, we have two field trips. We're going to the Junior Achievement, and we're going to a studio, a on. production studio, production studio. And you also have a sales day and a sale day. We have yeah, sales day. We have a wholesale <laughs> trip. We got a wholesale <laughs> trip downtown, and then on the Saturday, July thirtieth, mm-hmm. you can come out and you can buy the product that the kids are selling and they because they need a profit and then we're investing in them and they got to pay their investment back exactly. that Saturday exactly. <laughs> and um, so we want you to come out to the Los Angeles Urban League at 3450 Mount Vernon Avenue drive, drive in Los Angeles California is right there in the back of the on the mound, <laughs> the sales mound, and they're going to be selling their products. They're going to be pitching their product. By that time, they will have learned to market their products. Mm-hmm. They will learn pricing, pricing their product, packaging, t- packaging, yes. and even collaborating with one another yes. because they have found that they have to combine sometimes their their um, investment amount mm-hmm. in order to buy certain products and then and then being able to reach. So, and what we want is to have a large number of people coming by that. Saturday afternoon, it starts at? At 10. It's only 10 to 12.30. 10 to 12.30. Come by, uh, buy some of their product. Now, guys, I'm giving up tennis for this, so I know y'all can come out because I don't give up tennis for too many things. But for the kids, I'm going to give up my my Saturday morning tennis training and and come out with them. So we're going to ask that you guys come out as well and support the kids because you will be amazed at some of the things. We've had in the past artists. Mm -hmm. We've had, um, I think, the young man that won last year in mobile app. Elijah, what's his last name? Uh, Jackson? Joe. No? Joe. Mm-hmm. Uh, he created a mobile app, Hoop Dreams, mm-hmm. where if you're looking for a basketball game anywhere in the city, then you can put in, you can go on the app and mm-hmm. put in your uh, criteria, and it'll tell you who's playing, what type of court it is, and whether it's a rec center and, and everything. So that mm-hmm. was what he created. I think we also, we see, we've had... Um, a lot of social enterprise businesses. Mm-hmm. The young lady with the T-shirt that right. was selling the feed to children. Exactly. And um, and wherever. And then who else did we have that was kind of exciting? Um, um, Mario. Oh, Mario, the musician, ma- 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 magician. magician. He actually has been performing for since he was seven. Yes. Yeah, and he's now what sixteen, seventeen years old. Mm-hmm. So he he's a veteran <laughs> entrepreneur <laughs> at seventeen or sixteen. But he incredible, very talented, very. very very talented. They've had product lines. Some of them were already in business, and then some of them. Um, uh, develop their business, their concept right there in the classroom. And they are truly in intense. 
It's all all day long, you know, being uh, uh, in, uh, instruction, and then they have to take the application. We have games that actually they're creating um, inventions. Yes. They are doing a marketing campaign. Uh, then they get up in front of the class. And very hands-on. Mm-hmm. Very hands-on. So they're learning to speak and, and to pitch their businesses. Right. So then that's, it's not just how do you calculate where to get my product, but it's about your presentation skills as well and how you and building relationships. Like you can't do this by yourself without actually getting out there, building, having that conversation with someone and seeing where that's going to connect you. But it's just uh, not just the, the, the business plan skills like – presentation, communication skills, and how do you sell yourself? Because a lot of the businesses, a lot of ventures, um, or I want to say investors, um, invest in the people. So how do you present yourself up there? Uh, right, with your exactly. Idea? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I can recall a couple of kids when we were in the program, uh, so quiet when they first came in. You could <laughs> barely, barely, barely hear them. <laughs> Is it, what's your it's like, can you speak up, child? Can you speak up? <laughs> and then, but by the time the end of the week, boy, the, these big booming voices and and the competition day. Mm. And you guys talk on the. Can you talk on wow. the competition day? Rhonda? It is. It is electric. Yes. Uh, because these these young people who didn't think they could. It has been revealed. Their confidence is there. They're nervous. Yes. And then yet they're encouraging one another to, to do well because they realize that even if they don't win the monetary prize, that they all have come a long way. And it's, it's, it's a, a magic day. Magic day. Yeah, they impress me. I, I don't think I can ever do that. <laughs> 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 I tried. And it's like, they just they go far and beyond like, wow, like anybody's expectations. Mm-hmm. I think their own expectations. And they go up there, they're fearless, and they own it. You know, yes. they really come to a point where they start owning their voice and but, really projecting it. And we and, actually have three each room has three judges, three entrepreneurs that come out that have not seen yes. anything about their product. So this is real. It's not somebody's uh, the teacher sitting in. It's not you know Urban League staff just coming along. Come on in here and let's uh, judge these kids. No, it's give them a actually, grade. It's right. nothing like that. <laughs> no, 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 right. they, they're really presenting <laughs> rubric, yeah. because you just never know if this is the next launch right. to the next level of their life. Exactly. Right, you know. And and I've had young people graduate from college and call me back and say, do you realize that what you taught me, I learned it in college. I, you right. know, I refreshed it in college. And now I'm really thinking about that business, but doing a different business, not necessarily the one I started then. Um, because, you know, a serial entrepreneur usually goes through six different businesses exactly. anyway, in their lifetime. We do. <laughs> <laughs> and even I think one of the cl- a workshop, one of the uh, biz camps I worked at, one of the kids came back to volunteer. A couple mm-hmm. of kids have come back. Uh, Jordan yes. Williams, who's now uh, at Tougaloo University okay. um, and in Mississippi. And he's actually in town doing a comedy show tonight oh wow yeah, so he's he's really building his comedy business okay so so parents if you're out there and you are looking you have that entrepreneurial spirit child that's been wanting to have their own business and you don't know how to guide them and there's no resources you want to call us and at 323-293-3375 and um, find out so you can find out how you can be part of and get your child involved the orientation is tomorrow at 10, yes, at at 10 the o'clock at the Los Angeles Urban League, which is at 3450 Mount Vernon Drive in Los Angeles. So at 10 o'clock, you can come out and find about the program, sign your children up. Oh, and the best part, we didn't even say that. <laughs> that it <monetary>. is free. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so here's a 10-day camp for your children that is absolutely free, and they're fed, and they're entertained, and they're educated. And early on the other side of it, they actually could have you working for them (laughs) because that has happened uh, quite a few times so um we call it call in and and actually if you're interested in coming out you can call bonnie thomas jeter uh no let let me just give you this okay um what's the number 424-258-5433 okay the number again is 424-258-5433 
five four three three and that's my number and I can be able to answer all your questions. And this that is Rhonda Santerford. So if you have questions on how you can get your child involved in uh, the camp that's on December January twenty fifth through July August. 20th. I'm sorry, July twenty fifth <laughs> through, de- through August, August 5th. 5th, then uh, please call in. And any of you out there that have a passion and, and are very good at what you do and really know that you want to be there to help a child uh, reach their goals and their dreams, please, we need volunteers. We need coaches. Yes. We need judges. Um, it's really cool when a kid can look up and see that someone that, that looks like them is there coaching them. We also, in the past couple of years, have had uh, interns from Ernst & Young, yes. uh, fin- the t- financial wizards, and the kids are just amazing. <laughs> they're an amazing partnership. Amazing partnership. And they're coming back, too. They're coming back. Yes, good. they're coming yeah. back. And um, so we, 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 we just have a really good time at that camp, even though it's a lot of hard work and it's 8 o'clock in the morning. And it's so worth it. And it's so worth it. And it's <laughs> the 5 o'clock. And we have 25 kids, and, and, and we become their parents. And during that time, because we've actually had some personal, they've yes. had, they, you know, they we develop a relationship with the kids. Yes. And so they're coming to have conversation with you yes. to help guide them. So we've had a number of them. So we're going to go to break. This is the Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert. And we're going to take a break. And when we come back, now we're going to, these wonderful young people that were part of the program, uh, part of BizCamp, Uh, in the last couple of summers, Mm -hmm. they're going to come and tell us about their experience.